Hello everyone and welcome to a new series I'm going to be calling the best engines in which I review engines which have won awards. In this case I'm going to be starting with Ward's Auto 10 best engines awards and the first vehicle we're going to be talking about is the Mustang GT. This is the 2018 Mustang GT. It won a Ward's Auto 10 best. It also won in 2011 when they introduced the 5.0 and 2012 with the Boss 302 and there are some major revisions to the engine since 2011 and so we're going to get into those in this video. Okay, so first let's talk through some specifications. This is a 5.0 liter naturally aspirated 90 degree V8 engine. It's producing 460 horsepower at 7,000 RPM, up 25 horsepower from the previous model year, and it's producing 420 pound-feet of torque at 4,600 RPM, up 20 pound-feet from the 2017 model year. And shortly we will get into how they've made these improvements in performance. The red line has increased from 7,000 RPM up to 7,500 RPM for the 2018 model year. Quite a high RPM for a big cross-plane V8 engine. The compression ratio has also increased. So in 2017, the Shelby GT350 was running a 12 to 1 compression ratio, while the regular GT was running 11 to 1. Now in the 2018 model year, the regular GT is running a 12 to 1 compression ratio as well. The block and heads are made out of aluminum, as well as the pistons, which are cast aluminum. There are center forged connecting rods and a steel forged cross plane crankshaft. Dual overhead cams with four valves per cylinder, and it has twin independent variable cam timing so you can vary all of the individual camshafts both the intake and the exhaust now one of the really cool changes that they brought from the Shelby GT 350 over to the Mustang GT for 2018 is that they're now using plasma transferred wire arc spray in cylinder liners now this process uses electricity to create a plasma cloud which you melt a steel wire in and then you spray that melted steel on the sides of the cylinder bore the result is a strong liner, which is also lighter weight versus the previous cast iron cylinder liners used in the 2017 Mustang. But another benefit is that it actually increases displacement, because this cylinder liner is actually thinner than the previous cast iron sleeves. Okay, now you're thinking, wait a minute, last year it was a 5 liter engine, this year it's a 5 liter engine, they're the same. But actually they're not, because the cylinder liner has resulted in a wider bore. So the bore for 2018 is 93 millimeters versus 90. 92.2 millimeters for 2017. So if you do the math, which is very simple, the volume of a cylinder equals pi r squared times h. You multiply that by the number of cylinders, which is eight. And so both of these engines have a stroke of 92.7 millimeters. One has a bore of 92.2 millimeters. The other has a bore of 93 millimeters. You multiply all this out. And for 2017, the volume of this engine is 4.951 liters or 302 cubic inches, which means that yes, until 2018, these engines were not truly 5.0 liters. They were 4.95. And with the increase in the bore for 2018, it now works out to 5.0376 liters or 307 cubic inches. And it now truly is a 5 liter engine. Now in their defense, 4.95 does round up to 5 liters, uh, but it is cool that now it actually is the full 5.0 liter engine. Now I made the mistake of assuming that I could pull off this engine cover without tools before traveling to the middle of nowhere and it does require a socket to remove uh, this plastic engine cover off. So that's unfortunate uh, but the engine here so cylinders one two three four five six seven eight the firing order for this engine one five four eight six three seven two now looking at the engine bay, you can see this is quite a massive engine. Its width basically stretches from shock tower to the shock tower with maybe three to four inches in between on either side. And it's positioned about even uh, with the center of these shock towers. So maybe just slightly behind uh, the center of the front wheels, uh, but not much. Quite a large engine with these two massive dual overhead cams. I do like where they've placed the battery. They've got it tucked back here on the passenger side pushed as far back as it can be. Uh, nice from a weight distribution standpoint. As far as airflow, very simple for these naturally aspirated engines. They've got it pulling air from the front, which is great. Comes across to the air filter, moves through the throttle body in the center, 
then split between the eight cylinders, and then ported along each of the sides of the cylinder banks for the exhaust out to the rear of the car. Now, speaking of exhaust, we of course need to listen to the engine. This car actually has four exhaust modes. There are valves in the rear mufflers uh, towards the back of the tailpipes, which can open and close, allowing you to have different sound characteristics. Very cool stuff. We're going to start it up in normal mode and we'll listen to the other modes as well. So here, starting up in normal mode. Not a bad sound at all. I think it's actually one of the best sounding uh, stock Mustangs just from the factory. So that's normal mode, we'll give it a rev. That is normal mode. Now over to quiet mode. And we'll give it some revs in quiet mode. Put it in sport mode. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that definitely sounds better. And finally we will go to track mode. For track use, see manual it says. Now, before we get into some of the cool features of the 2018 engine, let's talk about some of the changes for the Gen 2 engine from Gen 1, which was introduced in 2011. So these were the changes that were made in 2015. They increased the size of both the intake and the exhaust valve diameters, and they also increased both of their lift, one millimeter, so up from 12 millimeters of lift for intake and exhaust to 13 millimeters. Gen 2 also saw stiffer springs to maintain contact with the camshaft at higher RPM, as well as a lockable intake cam timing phaser where it could lock the intake cam in the middle position. Another cool feature of the engine is what they call charge motion control valve. So essentially every cylinder's intake port has its own throttle body, and what this does is at low loads and low RPMs, it restricts airflow to allow for an increase in air velocity, which allows for better air and fuel mixing and promotes better combustion and is more efficient. So what about changes for the 2018 engine? Well, on top of the spray-in cylinder liners, they have now added direct injection. And when I say added, I say that because it still has port injectors. So great from a carbon buildup standpoint, but it also allows for better fuel control at high load, high RPM scenarios. Now the cylinder head is all new and they've also incorporated two additional knock sensors. So why put in more knock sensors? Well basically the reason they're doing this is they want to take advantage of timing as much as they can. So by incorporating additional knock sensors they can say you know how much can we advance that timing before we start to run into knock problems in order to maximize power in order to maximize efficiency. Uh, so some clever stuff that has gone into this 2018 engine. Of course, the increased compression ratio, the small increase in displacement, and the addition of direct injection, all allowing for this engine to make more power than the previous model year. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jason, I don't care about any of this engine talk. I just want to know what kind of fuel economy I'm going to be getting. Well, not to worry. I've got that information for you. If you get the manual transmission, which you should, you'll be getting 15 miles per gallon in the city, 25 miles per gallon on the highway. If you get the automatic, you now get a 10-speed versus the previous year's six speed and you'll be getting 16 miles per gallon in the city 25 miles per gallon on the highway an increase in both city and highway of one mile per gallon amazing so i hope you enjoyed this episode of the best engines i do plan on making a couple more of these and if it seems like something people are interested in i will continue to make them uh, if you have suggestions for improvements information i should include about the engines that i'm talking about uh, or some engines that you're particularly interested in learning about please feel free to suggest those in the comments below thanks for watching